I am Professor Tim Underwood. So I'm Professor of Gastrointestinal Surgery. I'm Head of the School of Cancer Sciences within the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Southampton. Uh, I am a Cancer Research UK and Royal College of Surgeons of England Advanced Clinician Scientist Fellow. And I'm also the Royal College of Surgeons um, Surgical special, Specialty Lead for Esophageal Cancer. Yes, uh, and that's through um, childhood, through my career in medicine, and all the way up to now as a consultant. And I've always done a blend of uh, clinical medicine and uh, translational science research. Over time, people can develop cancer. And cancer is a disease of cells where cell growth becomes disordered because of damage to the DNA which is the instruction manual in the middle of a cell that tells a cell how to behave. And if a cell isn't told how to behave properly, it can misbehave, and that's what causes cancer. I am particularly interested in a cancer called cancer of the esophagus, and the esophagus is a tube that connects your mouth to your stomach. So when you swallow, the food goes in your mouth, you swallow it, it goes down your esophagus and gets to your stomach. Um, our particular interest is in understanding the basic biology of those cancers. And in particular, we're interested in cancer ecosystems. So cancer cells don't exist by themselves. They exist alongside other cells, other normal cells of the body. But the cancer cells co-opt and coerce those cells into helping them grow and um, develop and then produce secondaries. So we're interested in understanding that ecosystem at single cell resolution. So for the last 20 years, we've studied cancers by looking at cancers as we take a lump out and we study that cancer and we look at the cancer cells. What we do is smash that cancer biopsy into thousands of individual cells and then we understand the instruction manual in each of those individual cells and how they may have gone wrong or how they may be being used by the cancer to promote the cancer's own, uh, uh, own growth. So that's one part of it. And we've just um, submitted a paper today, I think we're going to submit to Cancer Cell, which is one of the big journals in our field explaining this ecosystem in esophageal cancer for the first time ever. Uh, the other side of it is really applied to the clinical work that I do, which is actually as a surgeon removing these cancers. And that's about understanding who will benefit from the current treatments that we give and how to predict those treatments using some of our biological understanding but also using high-end computation, so using artificial intelligence and machine learning to um, find patterns in the biological data that we simply can't see because our brains aren't programmed to see it and we don't have the processing space to do it as humans. Actually, we're pretty good, but the computers are better than us at this. So we're using that to define treatment for these patients. So the cancer that I treat is really, really hard to treat. It, 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 it's diagnosed late. Two thirds of people already have um, cancer that's spread from its primary site at the time of diagnosis. And for those patients, they cannot be cured. For the one third of patients that I see, and we can possibly think about treating with an operation and, and chemotherapy or radiotherapy or a mixture of all three, even if we do that, their chance of being alive at five years is only 50-50. After we've put them through a year of debilitating treatment and rearranged their insides in a way that's really unpleasant to live with. Um, so understanding the basic biology of these cancers better and how the body interacts with these cancers will help us to do intervene in all of those pathways. Hopefully make incurable patients have a good quality and quantity of life, possibly move some of those into a curable section, and for the ones that are potentially curable, increase their chance of survival at five years, um, to the stage where we could possibly consider living with cancers as chronic diseases, for example. Science has careers for everyone. It has careers for women. It has careers for people from diverse ethnic backgrounds. It has people from. Um, it has careers for people uh, who are may feel that they're socially not me, white middle class male. Right. It, science is for everybody, and the reason that science will be good is because we will have diverse teams with with different views 
that leads scientific process in a really good direction. It's a fun career. Um, it's not without its 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 uh, its difficulties and frustrations, but that's the same for every single job you could possibly do. Uh, and science is one of the only places where you have some freedom to say, "I'm going to study this. I'll try and get some funding for it, and if I can, I've got five years to do this thing that I chose to do." Very, very other, very few other careers or very professions allow you that that kind of autonomy to say, I'm going to study this, get some money for it and do it. And you might actually make a difference at the end of the day. Wonderful. <laughs>